Hello again, RPG a day, 2018 on Seawolf's Den. Game Master Ron here, number 22. I am going the alternate question route again because number 22 is a question of non-dice systems. My last answer talked about how much I love dice. Well, the alternate is true. I do not like non-dice systems. Have I given any a try? Honestly, no. But the fact that they are diceless turns me off immediately. I have too much to do, not enough gaming time, to try something that on the outset I may or may not like. Of course, it always depends on the GM. I gave some other systems a try that I didn't think I'd like, and it turns out I was right. The alternate question is the most ambitious campaign I ever achieved. Now, I've talked about this before, and I've talked about it over and over again, my magnum opus. And the only reason I'm talking about it again is because I just had a long conversation about it with my game group, some of which were in that campaign. I'll never get back to something like that again, at least not until after I retire and my kids are out of the house. Dark Strider, as I just described, was a massive campaign. Written by several people, Peter Schweighoffer, who I was lucky enough to meet, was one of the writers. The others I didn't get a chance to meet, but the entire campaign they wrote was fantastic. It captured the essence of what I felt Star Wars post- Return of the Jedi would be during what is now called the Legends period, we call the Expanded Universe. There was a mad dash once Timothy Zahn released his books and showed that the Empire was still in its death throes, that there can be multiple warlords and that meant multiple stories. That's so much potential. People realized how big the galaxy was and how much it could be, which in the end is exactly why I hate the new movies because it destroyed all that potential given that the campaign was basically centered around a if i can remember right the campaign was centered around an admiral sarn and his ruling over a sector the cathal sector if i remember what it, admiral sarn had got gained access to some kind of alien technology called dark strider while they weren't entirely specific on what Dark Strider was, they, they, they gave some hints, but they get left a lot of room to play around with it. And I did. Being a big fan of ancient alien stories, this one just snagged me. And so the campaign called for players to play three characters, going over this before, where they played the command level, they played the crewman level and an away team level. The away team was a character they created and like a friend of mine said the other night, while they invested themselves a lot into the character they created in the beginning, by the end of the campaign they loved the pre-generated characters more. The guy I was talking to Friday night was the captain. He was put through a whirlwind of emotions during this campaign. As I said in the tricky situation I've enjoyed video, this whole campaign was rather tricky because of the politics that arose out of it. They continued to talk about it. I, I Even after the session, they emailed me. I, I honestly had players threaten to quit and because it was too intense. I did have one leave because it was more role play than he could handle which was fine because he was playing one of the most role-play intensive characters in the group and i was glad to hand that off to somebody else who played her to a hilt and increased the intrigue on levels that and that was what it was about there was a lot of intrigue the backgrounds of each one of these characters was so intertwined but also shady most of them had a shady background I didn't create these. It wasn't my fault. I was keeping tell I I kept telling them, you're playing the characters the way they are intended, but I didn't 
write this, this is, they kept blaming me. This is not my fault. And honestly, you know, I, I say they blame me and that they struggled with, no, they, they had a lot of fun with it, bottom line. Would they go back and do it again? Probably, but not with or certain players not involved. But I had, in the beginning, I had eight players. But on average, showing up, I had five to six. Each playing three to four characters, which was more than enough. And I had one player who got his enjoyment more out of commanding an entire commando team and doing some tactical strikes, kind of play by email. And then he'd play his characters in the sessions. Uh, so we did that too. So we expanded it to a pretty high level. What I liked about how I did the campaign, I utilized the web quite a bit and email. Each story arc was each story arc was chosen by the players. I gave them a series of intelligence briefings. And this campaign didn't call for it, but I wanted to make them feel like that they were making their own choices. And so I gave them three or four intelligence points from the New Republic saying this, this, and this are happening. You need to do something about these things. Nine times out of ten, they picked the one I prefer they did. And when they didn't, I'd find a way to get them back around to where I wanted them to. But the intelligence I gave them, all of them were directed in some direction that I wanted them to go. Or at least, you know, three out of the four. They, they got pieces of developing plot through uh, New Republic intelligence reports. And I wish I could go back and do that again. That would be a blast. But this way, they're kind of doing their choose their own path storyline. Once they pick their path from this intelligence, then we'd go with it. I was prepared for any one of those. And some of it was written inside the campaign book. Others I had created uh, myself. What I did was, and I've said this before, I thought maybe that this would be my last Star Wars campaign. So at the same time I was getting ready for this campaign, another campaign box came out called Lords of the Expanse. And again, it was more intrigue based. It was uh, factional. It had noble houses and, and all kinds of stuff like that. And I was heavily into that at that time, thanks to games like Fading Suns and stuff like that. But I never thought I'd get to do that campaign setting. Uh, I thought that Dark Strider was going to be so intense that it was going to wear me out. And it did, but the players came right back and wanted to continue to do another campaign. So I took some of the elements of Lords of the Expanse and, and integrated it into Dark Strider, as well as some elements of Fading Suns. What, where a Lords of the Expanse had just a noble houses, uh, I added a church, which is not always, how would we say, Lucasonian Star Wars. If that's not a thing, it's a thing now. Uh, because he avoided religion like the plague, except that the Force and Jedis were sort of a religion. But I decided to throw religion in there. And so the first portion of this sector was ruled by these noble houses in this church. And I think I had the guilds as well, which were merchant guilds. I wrote them out and even made house symbols for each one of them. The players ended up interacting with them quite a bit. And that's where a lot of the intrigue came in. And of course, I also had the uh, pretty substantial underground that uh, allowed them to deal with criminal elements because there were criminals on board and yeah that didn't help the intrigue at all and the ship man that map was awesome the players loved it loved having a ship of their own the si that size it was basically the blockade runner type ship with a little bit of an add-on small docking bay on the side for x the x-wings and the uh, scout ships they had it was the best one of the best written campaigns uh, and no you don't i mean it could have been done in any science fiction campaign to be honest with you take away the star wars elements and you've got yourself a generic science fiction campaign chasing down a dude that's got strange ancient alien technology 
and ruling over this sector, like, or planning to rule over this sector and eventually the galaxy. Continued with lots of ancient alien storylines as they went deeper and deeper into the sector and once they left the noble houses, it just started to grow from there. This, the mystery, the alienness, and, this, and, and the various things about it. What I think I also liked the most about this campaign, that it wasn't, it wasn't overpowered by a Jedi. I don't think there was any Jedi element in the campaign. No Force users, I don't think. I'd have to think, I'd have to look back, but maybe the Imperial ended up being Force sensitive. I don't remember. But I don't remember Jedi's being a huge factor. And that's the biggest problem with D6 Star Wars. Was that once you had a Jedi, or more than one, in the campaign, it, the balance was gone. Jedi's were broken in D6. So, I only talked about this again because I talked about it Friday with a friend and we, we, we just reminisced. So... It is a campaign that the players all look back at and say that was pretty ambitious, pretty intense. It lasted something like two and a half years. I was running every two weeks as often as I could. My job at the time allowed me to have a lot of time to work on it. So the time spent on it definitely showed. The website I built at the time, which was in the early 90s, was impressive enough that even the writer, one of the other writers, Ed Stark, I think it was, maybe, made a comment on my website that he liked it a lot. Because I used a lot of the art the motif that was in the book to make it look like it was a ship readout. Today, it would take a lot more work to do something like that. Uh, now it's just all that content still exists, uh, but it's in a WordPress format and it's on uh, it's on my website. Not trying to plug myself, don't get me wrong, uh, but I do want to plug that campaign. That campaign is worth the money you spend. I'm, I'm sure it's expensive as heck online. I'm sure you can get a PDF copy nowadays somehow. So anyway, I think I've talked about this enough. Hopefully this is the last time I talk about the Dark Strider campaign. Until next time, seek the wolf in thyself.